Well, hello everyone. This is Dr. Eileen and this is Medicine Walk. And for those of you who are listening in on Blog Talk Radio, it's Healing House Radio. I hope everyone's had a really good week. And as we come to the second of the last uh, sessions on grounding, since October has five weeks in it, we will do our recap next week. And so if there are any questions that you have, you can uh, either post them as comments, you can contact me through Twitter, and all of that stuff is in the description. We'll go over all of it again at the end. And I am in the chat room during the premiere episode on YouTube. So uh, if you log in to YouTube at that point while, I'm, uh, while the broadcast is going on, you can ask me questions live. So if you're listening it on Blog Talk Radio, uh, please feel free to visit the YouTube page and the link is in the description there. So we have gone over how you define grounding. We've gone over some tips and tricks for the actual process of grounding. Now let's bring other people into the scenario because it's very easy to be grounded in a situation where you are um, by yourself and you're among the trees or you're sitting by the beach or you're in the woods or you're listening to your favorite motivational CD and to get nice and solid and grounded. And then other people come into it and they could be loved ones, they could be coworkers, they could be uh, friends, whatever. Somebody else can come in and all of your very carefully crafted peace of mind and grounding can go straight out the window with either a question, a comment, or some sort of an issue that is brought and dropped on your grounded doorstep. So today we're going to be talking about how to remain grounded in an ungrounded world. And that can, it, it's as simple or as tricky as you want to make it. Because once you are able to go into that space and find that grounded point, well, then it's up to you to figure out how to be able to get back to it. I don't believe that we can stay in that grounded place. I don't believe that life is meant to just be in one frame of mind or one state of being. So we're going to go in and out of, you know, think of it like the tide, you know, the ocean tide goes in and out and there will be times when we're more grounded and times when we're less grounded. It's not about staying there. It's about how quickly can you recover and get back to it. So, um, Today, we're just going to sort of focus not so much on the process, but on the maintenance, because it's the maintenance that is the issue. So let's say, you know, you get yourself nice and grounded. Let's say, you know, you go to work and you listen to wonderful, happy music, grounding music in the car, get out of the car, walk into your job, and three different people come to you with a problem, and two of those three claim it's your fault. So do you lose that nice, comfortable place that you're in and fall into, oh my God, and you know, just that aggravated state? Or do you figure out a way to take control of the situation? Because often when we lose that groundedness, it's because we lose what we feel is control over the variables in in the energetic field we're in and what I mean by that is just like I said before it's very easy to stay grounded when you're by yourself because then you have control over the energy you have control over you know the ebb and flow of what's going on inside of you and when other people get involved or other situations come up or those you know, the things in life that happen, that always happen, to throw us a little bit off balance or a lot of bit off balance, then we feel out of control. We feel um, less able to decide what it is we want to happen in our, in our personal energetic field. So, one of the first things that I do and what I recommend is, you know, if I'm in a good space, 
if I'm going to enter a space that I know may hold some surprises for me, well, then I just say, okay, um, let me kind of prepare myself. Maybe I'll take a couple of deep breaths. Maybe I will um, walk around the building once. You know, I don't enter in in a rushed um, state. You know, if I'm running late, well, an extra minute is not going to make me less late. So I may as well just stop, take a breath, go, okay, whatever's in there, we got this. It's going to be all right. It's going to be okay. So a lot of times there's that prep that you can do. You know, let's say it's not your work. Let's say it's a family function. Let's say it is a, you know, one of those big to-dos where, you know, all the little family dr drama and dynamics can come out. Again, before you go into it, take a breath. Stop. You know, pause outside. You can always pause. You can say, all right, I just need a minute. You know, if you're walking in with somebody, just, you know, stand outside for a few minutes. Or that person can go ahead and say, oh, yeah, they'll be right in. And, you know, just take a second for yourself. If you're walking into the unknown, be prepared for it. Except, okay, you know, somebody may say something to me or, you know, the gee, you wore that or whatever little judgmental type of thing that you might be facing depending on what the environment is, prep yourself for it. Go, okay, what can throw off my grounding going into this situation? Um, one of the things that uh, people actually talk to me about going to the DMV. And yeah it can it can be frustrating and you're in lines and then you're in the wrong line and then they send you and then you've got to wait half the day and people you know normally people will consider that like the ultimate in the challenge to being centered and grounding because it just seems so aggravating i mean for me it really isn't because i go into it going okay i'm going to be spending the next few hours dealing with this and either i can just sit and stew the entire time or I can bring a book or I can listen to music or I can you know check my emails and you know with tablets and cell phones and all of that there's lots of things that you can do to entertain yourself or sometimes I just go you know what I can people watch or maybe I'll look up at the numbers and see if I can guess which window my number will come up on and then it's like okay we're getting up to it am i going to go to number 22 number 23 there are a lot of ways that we can use our imagination and use our ability to look beyond the situation for something that we can kind of hold on to and so yeah and that can apply to any type of environment you're going into if you're going into a very sad situation, let's say you're going to a funeral and you know, you know it's gonna be very emotional. Um, maybe you're going to a wedding or a christening and you know, maybe you just broke up with your significant other and, and you're going into a wedding. And you know, there's lots of things that can throw us off. It's not specifically what the event is, but the story that we attach to it. So, you know, wedding, yay, wonderful, but if, you know, you're filing the paperwork for your own divorce, that can be a little bit tricky. So you go into it, you know, first you decide, okay, is, is this going to be okay for me? Is this something that I want to do? Not that I need to do, not that I have to do, not what is expected of me. Because all of those, the, you know, need to, have to, and expected of, those are can be very damaging to grounding because what they do is they add that sense of guilt to it. You cannot be grounded and feel guilty at the same time. If you decide, you know what, this is, you know, this family member or someone I care about or or whatever, and you want to go ahead and go, then you do it. And before you go in, you take a breath, you go, you know what, it's going to be okay. It's going to be okay. 
And I cannot tell you how many times I have walked into a situation or walked in some place, and before I go in, I'll take a breath and I'll say, we got this. You know, because for me, I say we got this because my spiritual beliefs are that there's a creator who loves me and you know, loves me in spite of myself and is there for me, that I have a spiritual support group. And, you know, my, you know, family members who have passed, you know, sometimes I feel them there and helping me out. So I always say, we got this and we're going to be okay. No matter what it is, we got this, we're going to be okay. And then I take a breath and I go in. And, you know, maybe it's an event where, you know, maybe my ex is there, maybe, you know, and his wife, who I adore. And so, you know, a part of my divorce was making it very conscious that, you know, we were able to maintain a friendship afterwards, which we have. Um, it's been a long time and, and, you know, we both love our sons. So we created a situation where it would be okay. So, you know, whatever it is that you need to put into motion for yourself in a situation that you're walking into that's going to challenge your grounding, that's going to challenge your sense of feeling okay and of being able to, you know, feel like you're firmly planted, then the trick is that you need to go ahead and say, all right, hold on just a second. Just have to check that. There we go. <laughs> Technology. So the idea that you can be the architect and the director of what it is that you are going to go into. Now you cannot control the situation. You cannot control what others choose to do. You definitely cannot control how other people are going to react or respond to anything. What you can control is what it is that you do with the story that comes in. What is the meaning you attach to it? If somebody comes up to you and you go, oh, you look so nice today, you can either go into the place of, oh, so I don't look nice every other day, or, you know, looking for the hidden insult or, or whatever. Or you can just go, oh, thank you, and keep on walking. And it, one, it drives people crazy because if they are trying to make some little nasty passive aggressive type of comment and you go, oh, thank you, and walk away and they're like, uh, they're not as upset as I hoped they would be, which, very cool. Um, but either way, you know, you get to decide what it is that you do with that environment. How does it affect your energy? Does it take you out of that place? And yeah, maybe maybe something comes up that kind of knocks you for a loop a little bit or somebody comes up and says something or, you know, maybe emotions come up, especially like, you know, maybe it is a funeral and maybe you've got a lot of emotion around the person who passed or the grief. You know, a lot of times people who are em empathic have a very difficult time with, you know, strong emotionally charged events. And so funerals can be very difficult or, you know, maybe something just touches you and you do feel that emotional sense. Just because you're feeling emotional doesn't mean you're not grounded. You can be crying and grounded. You can be laughing hysterically and grounded. Grounded doesn't have anything to do with your emotional state. It has to do with your ability to be autonomous. It has, the, it has to do with your ability to hold your ground. Now you can do whatever you want with the, the energetic space that you're in and the emotional space. You can be solid as a rock and have tears pouring down your face. And that's okay. Don't think that it means you know you have to be stoic or always be zen and smiling and peaceful because that's not what it means. What it means is that you know who you are and you are okay with that that you are not subject to you know the whims of the energy around you you know you can be you can be grieving and still be solid in that grieving you can say you know what i feel sad 
And right now in this space, I'm going to own that sadness. I'm going to embody that sadness. And then I'm going to let it pass. I'm going to let it go. We don't lose grounding because we get emotional. We lose grounding because we give our power to someone else. We give someone else control over how we feel and how we respond. It's like uh, times that I've said, you know, my concept of forgiveness, you know, when I know I've forgiven someone, it's when I no longer choose to give them the power to inspire in me a feeling I don't want to feel. If I look at somebody and they did me some type of dirt and I'm angry and I'm frustrated and I'm upset, I don't want to feel those things. I don't want them to inspire that feeling in me. And when I reach the place where I can look at them and no longer allow them to inspire that feeling, I'm done. So grounding is about being in that space of owning your own space, of deciding what you want to feel and how you want to feel it and being solid in that because that is your right. So consider, one, grounding has nothing to do with the emotional state you're in as long as that state is what you are consciously choosing and owning. You can be solid as a rock. And two, take a breath before you go in. Ground yourself, reaffirm your grounding before you walk in, knowing that there's all kinds of stuff that may throw you off, but you stay in control of you. So, I hope this was helpful. And like I said, um, for the first episode, I've been in the chat room and for any future episodes, I will, for the premiere of the episode only, I will be in the chat room and you can uh, ask questions in there or you can contact me in the description. There's the link for my uh, Facebook group, Medicine Walk with Dr. Eileen. And you can also contact me on Twitter. Um, if you like this video, if you find it valuable, then you can like it, you can comment, you can subscribe. And, you know, it's always great to, you know, see more sub subscribers signing on and the community growing, and that really helps me out. And you can uh, also uh, share this video. If you would like to support me on a higher level, you can check out my Patreon link, where for as low as $2 a month, you can help support me in growing this and, and you know, improving and upgrading and all those other things. So um, check it out. And thank you for joining me. Next week, we'll do our wrap up of grounding. And then, you know, we'll see what the new topic for November is. So until then, as always, I wish you balance and I wish you blessings from my heart to yours. Love you. And class dismissed. <laughs>